Coming up on today's Airborne, Pipistro has flown its two-place electric trainer for the first time. For Flight Mobile 6.3 is now in the App Store, and Wingfoot 1 ushers in a new era of Goodyear blunts. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. For the first time, Pippa Stroll has flown its two-place electric trainer. Tom Patton has that story. The company developed the airplane called the Watts Up in partnership with Siemens AG, which provided the electric main propulsion components. The airplane is designed specifically to meet the needs of flight schools, including a short takeoff distance, 1,000 foot per minute climb, and endurance of one hour plus a 30 minute reserve. Pipistrel says the Watts Up is optimized for traffic pattern operations, where 13% of its energy is recaptured on every approach, increasing endurance and at the same time enabling short field landings. Pipistrel expects to bring the final product to market in 2015 with a target price below $132,000. It will make its public debut at the Salon du Bois Air Show in France on August 30th and 31st. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. For Flight Mobile 6.3 is now in the App Store and it has two new major features, Track Log and Weight and Balance. Track Log is a cloud-enabled flight recorder that allows you to capture your flight track data, upload it to the cloud, export it to third-party flight review and mapping applications, and share flight tracks with others. Track Log is built upon ForeFlight's sync system, and it makes track data available on all your mobile devices. The new weight and balance tool allows you to quickly determine whether your aircraft is loaded within its envelope. Weight and balance is preloaded with many aircraft models, and ForeFlight Mobile's Smart Setup Interview configures your aircraft based on FAA type certificate data sheet and service bulletin records. After the break, it's the beginning of a new era of Goodyear blimps. You're watching Airborne. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news by at aero news.net. The newest Goodyear blimp, named Wingfoot One, is the first of a new generation of airships. Manufactured by Germany's ZLT Zeppelin Company, and assembled by a team of Zeppelin and Goodyear engineers over the past 12 months. It represents the first major structural design change of a Goodyear airship in nearly 70 years. The new blimp features advanced onboard avionics and flight control systems with the capability to travel at faster speeds and hover in place. The spacious passenger gondola will provide an enhanced in-flight experience with sweeping panoramic windows. Goodyear will introduce two additional blimps to the skies over the next four years, as it phases out its two remaining GZ-20 models. Goodyear has built more than 300 lighter-than-air vehicles for public relations and defense applications, and many have been built at the Wingfoot Lake facility. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Well, after seven days of building the aircraft, we are ready for the first flight. Building the Zenith 750 Cruiser One Week Wonder at AirVenture 2014 was a huge success. And in this video, you'll see its first flight. And by the way, listen and watch carefully for the aircraft in number. Write it down and see if you can figure out what it means. Search First Flight One Week Wonder on YouTube. I looked at the charts. 
The International Council of Airshow Foundation has announced the induction of three new members into its Airshow Hall of Fame. They will be honored at the ICAST Chairman's Banquet on Thursday, December 11th at the Rio Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Inductee Jean Susie has helped to define airshow entertainment during an airshow career that has now spanned parts of six different decades. His performances over the years have been exciting and varied in style and format. Inductee Chuck Newcomb has worked professionally in the airshow business for more than 40 years. His introduction to the business was as a member of the U.S. Navy Blue Angels in the early 1970s. Newcomb has organized and conducted air shows all over the world. Also inducted is the Aeroshell Aerobatic Team. It's the longest running civilian aerobatic team in North America. Flying their iconic red, white, and black North American AT-6 Texans, the team is renowned for their professional airmanship. We at ANN say congratulations to all three inductees. Coming up, the replica Wright B Flyer may be getting a replacement. We'll be right back after these messages. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Wright B Flyer Incorporated is an all-volunteer organization that flies a look-alike of the Wright Brothers' first production airplane. The not-for-profit organization has been flying the Wright B Flyer No. 1, also known as Brown Bird, since 1982. The one-of-a-kind airplane resembles a 1911 Wright Model B airplane, but its design meets modern airworthiness standards and it's built from modern parts and materials. Thanks to loving care and good maintenance, this airplane has been flying for a generation. But Jay Jabor, the Wright B Flyer president and acting chair, said, quote, we're thinking ahead to the next generation. Eventually we'll need to replace the Brown Bird with a new plane. To ensure continuity of our mission in future years, we're beginning the replacement process now, end quote. Wright B Flyer is developing a fundraising plan for financial and in-kind donations. The project has already received a substantial donation by an individual. The National Transportation Safety Board has revoked the party status of both the Independent Pilots Association and UPS Airlines from its ongoing investigation of UPS Flight 1354, an air cargo flight that crashed on approach to Birmingham, Alabama, last August. The NTSB may grant party status to those organizations that are able to provide technical assistance in an investigation. As a condition to being granted this status, parties sign an agreement that explicitly prohibits them from releasing investigative information to the media or to comment or analyze investigative findings without prior consultation with the NTSB. Without first consulting with the NTSB, the IPA issued a press release two weeks ago providing its own analysis of the accident. And without the NTSB's approval, UPS posted comments on a website responding to the IPA press release in which it also provided its own analysis. The bottom line is, if you don't play by the rules, you're off the team. An investigation by the Civil Aviation Administration of China has determined that a China Eastern flight was forced to abandon a landing attempt and go around because air traffic controllers were sleeping on the job. It's reported that the flight had started its descent into Hunan Airport and attempted to contact controllers three times, twice in English and once in Chinese. There was no response to the airliner crew. The aircraft was then forced to abort its landing and circled the airport for about 10 minutes. 
before landing sometime between 2 and 3 a.m. local time. No additional comments were available from either the CAAC or China Eastern. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And stay tuned for some huge upgrades coming soon to Airborne.